we're going to talk about payment for order flow, which uh, is an important aspect of modern markets. This relies on you knowing uh, what uh, we talked about in The Only Game in Town. I did a presentation on it. Uh, and, and what we went over in that presentation is that there are three, roughly three types of uh, traders in the market, liquidity, noise, and informed. And the market makers, the financial industry, always gains from the liquidity and noise trading and loses to the informed. Uh, if, you, if you haven't watched that video, definitely watch that or watch any video uh, on, the, on the paper called uh, The Only Game in Town. So now what that talked about is how, okay, well, uh, if this is so, then what the financial industry wants to do is increase the amount of uh, noise and liquidity traders. They can't really affect liquidity, so they really try to increase the amount of noise traders. What we're going to do here, though, is look at once a snapshot in time, and we're not going to look at it from the perspective of the whole financial industry. Let's just say we're one market maker, we're, uh, and we want to simply get more liquidity and noise traders for ourselves. So in other words, if we fix time, then right now there is a set amount of liquidity and a set amount of noise that we can't affect. So in other words, we as a market maker want to get a bigger slice of the pie. So how do we do that? And the first thing to notice is that uh, liquidity and noise traders tend to, well, small retail traders tend to be liquidity and noise traders, right? So I, I can think as a market maker, well, I want to get more of, of uh, liquidity, I want to get more small retail traders, right? Uh, alternatively, uh, informed, you know, institutions, uh, if institutions can be liquidity and noise, but the informed tend to be institutions. So the idea here is, if I want to get a, a bigger slice of um, the liquidity and noise traders, what I really want to do is uh, get the, the tr I want to trade against small retail traders and not institutions, right? So now the question is, how, me as a market maker, am I going to uh, try to trade against them and, and exclude them and not trade against institutions? The idea here is, there's nothing, I, if, I, if I'm going to sit in the exchange, right, I can adjust my spread um, and so forth, but that's going to attract both. Uh, what I can try to do is I can try to identify, well, small retail traders tend to do small trades, they tend to do odd lots and so forth. So I can, I can, I can maybe use that to try to identify small retail traders and then, and then trade against them. However, institutions uh, will try to, to, to disguise themselves as small retail traders. They, the, uh, uh, they can break their orders up, use an algorithm to, to, to make their orders look like uh, small retail traders. So the easiest, the best way to, to get small retail traders is uh, to get them before they hit the exchange, right? So that's where payment for order flow comes in. So what, uh, what I might do as a market maker is I'm going to say, okay, well, I'm going to get their orders bef before they even get to the exchange. So I, now, uh, let's just say there's a brokerage called Millennial Inc., right? So uh, what I'll do is I'll, play, I'll pay Millennial, a brokerage firm, $100 million for all of their orders, right? So what the idea is, is their orders are going to come to me first, and I'm going to decide if I want to trade against them, and then if I don't, then I'm going to send them to the exchange, right? So now, within this deal, right, is I can't give... The, uh, so I'm going to pay for their order flow. I'm going to pay Millennial 100 million for their order flow. They're going to send all their orders to me. I can't get them, give them a worse price than they will get in the in the in the exchange, right? So in other words, I have to beat the exchange prices. And this is where most the the big well most people get confused about payment for order flow. So the idea is somebody will say, well, you know, you're paying them 100 million and you're giving them better prices than they than they'll get at the exchange. What's the catch? Are you they, they must be front-running them or, or something like that. Where, in reality, the idea of this is the, the, ex, the spread that is available on the exchange, the bid and ask spread that's available on the exchange, that is taking, that's taking into account the liquidity, noise, and informed traders, right? But the idea here is the, the greater the number of informed traders, the wider the spread has to be. Alternatively, the fewer, the, the lower proportion of informed traders, the more I can narrow the spread. So the idea here is if I'm getting millennial and they are all small retail traders and there's pretty much no uh, informed, then I can narrow the spread. You see, it's not hard to match the exchange spreads because the, exchange, the spread on the exchange takes into account a much larger proportion of informed. So their spreads have to be wider. So, there's no front running or anything going on here. It's just the fact that I have taken all the, the, the liquidity and noise so I can have a smaller spread and make a profit, 
right? I don't have to worry because I've got the, you know, I've identified these and got them before they hit the exchange. I don't have to keep my spread so wide uh, because uh, they may be informed, right? So now, you know, once you know that, that's that's the big sort of thing to get here is that we've skimmed off uh, um, uh, the liquidity and noise, and we, we we don't have any informed, so we can offer a spread, so a, a narrower spread, and it's easy to beat or or at least match. Um, the, the exchange spreads. So, in other words, if uh, you you have a brokerage account and and your broker very likely has a deal of payment for order flow, you know this isn't necessarily a bad thing, right? It's because uh, you're uninformed, they're going to be able to give you a narrower spread. All right. So, and then the idea of this is, uh, you know, the calculation that the that the brokerage would do is say, okay, let's say the brokerage generates 500 billion in orders. Uh, an average spread of 0.01%, and that will give uh, 500 million in expected uh, 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 revenue uh, minus the 100 million I paid for the order flow, uh, 400 million profit. So the idea here is all I have to do is look at a brokerage and say, okay, well, uh, you know, they, they generate this amount of orders. They, they're generally small retail traders. They generate this out. Of, they generally uh, generate this amount in order flow um, times my spread, and that you know gives me a, a very quick calculation. So it's not hard to sort of guess or, or um, calculate my expected profit. And once you have this, once you kind of understand how this works, you can also start to value order flow. So think about it this way: Is the order flow exact? Is is the order flow the same for any brokerage? So uh, in class, I, I often use an example of you know and. Um, of uh, Gen X versus Millennial, right? So let's just say uh, there's another brokerage called Gen X, and they generally tend to be a lot of liquidity traders, right? But the order flow for Millennial happens to be a lot of noise traders, right? Uh, so the idea here is now you can think of this in terms of the cap M. Think in terms of, uh, of the cap M. If a uh, if a stream of cash flows is highly correlated with the economy, right, uh, then it has to have a higher expected return. It'll have a lower price, a higher expected return. If it's not that correlated with the economy, it'll have a lower expected return. You know, that's what the cap is telling us. So what you can think of here is, well, if, if uh, millennials is a lot of noise traders, what we know about markets is when they go up and everyone's doing well, they trade a lot. Uh, but when the markets crash, they stop trading. So in other words, uh, the noise traders um, at Millennial would have a high beta, which means a high expected return. Um, the you know if, if greater liquidity traders, liquidity traders, you know they they're going to earn more when the economy is doing well and less when the economy is doing uh, poorly. So they, they will have a uh, they have some exposure, but uh, but not as highly correlated. Uh, they would have a lower beta than um, noise traders. So Gen X, uh, the the expected return on on this uh, order flow would be lower. Price is high, lower expected. Return. Right. So now you know. Now that you sort of understand what's what's going on here, you can uh, start to value order flow. Uh, two things be before I leave it off. One thing and I also talk about this a little bit in class is, uh, and, and this is for lack of a, of a better way of saying it, what this is kind of saying is bad customers is good business, right? So the idea here is if you're running a brokerage firm, uh, you know, all of this is payment for order flow relies on you having small retail traders that are. Uh, well, there could be liquidity traders or just clueless noise traders, right? So the idea here is, uh, if you ha let's say you had a brokerage and, and everyone was really well informed, uh, and uh, then you know payment for order flow, you wouldn't be able to sell your order flow, right? So the idea here of here is, uh, for, for lack of a better term, the, the more clueless your customers, uh, the the uh, more likely it is uh, to be able to sell the order flow, right? That that's what's going on here. And again, because if they're um, uh, if they're not informed, I can narrow the spread, beat the exchange, pay for that order flow, and earn that, and, and earn a profit. Uh, lastly, there are uh, a couple cases that are prominent, and this is why you know it comes up in, in class a lot. So there is a, a brokerage firm that sells their order flow, uh, quite a famous brokerage firm now, uh, Robinhood, and they 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 uh, were fined. So I'll, I'll link to some. Uh, I'm going to link to three things in, in, in the uh, summary of the of the video. First thing I'm going to link to is the the video for the uh, the only game in town. Another is I'm going to link to uh, uh, some some lecture notes I have here that have this uh, links to uh, some of the FINRA articles. But uh, what Robinhood was they were paying for order flow, and uh, 
uh, they were paid for workflow, I'm sorry, and they, uh, um, they were fine because they didn't ensure that their, their customers got uh, the best price. Uh, you know, the, the, the prices that they received when they traded were uh, no worse uh, than, than what they would get on the exchange. So, but that is not a particular aspect of payment for order flow. That's maybe an oversight on their part, but the idea is payment for order flow does not re doesn't uh, rely on giving uh, their customers bad quotes. That you know, I don't know why that happened. I didn't, I didn't look very much into it. Uh, the idea here is, if you, if they are being paid for order flow because they, sh the, the whoever is paying for it should be able to beat the spread. Right? Um, that's not an you know. So uh, when you see cases like that, it is not an inherent uh, aspect of payment for order flow. Now, that's not to say there are no concerns with payment for order flow. Just really no concerns uh, if you're a small retail trader. I wouldn't worry about it. But uh, uh, there's there's a good paper by Maureen O'Hara uh, at Cornell, uh, and she uh, you know wrote a while back called uh, uh, cream, uh, it's cream skimming or profit sharing. Uh, I think I'll link to it in, in the description. So one of the things that I you know one of the, one of the concerns here is is mainly for regulators looking at uh, the viability of markets. So the, uh, the idea here is what you can what the, uh, what some people term is taking the Getting the liquidity in the North Street is before they hit the exchange is cream skimming. Like, you know, uh, um, so, you know, taking the good parts and leaving the bad. So the idea here is, for markets, these are the good parts, you know, this is the bad, right? So the idea here is if, um, if all the cream is skimmed off, all the liquidity in noise traders, uh, orders are, are, are taken and never hit the exchange, so it's mainly in form that are hitting the exchange, then because of this, um, the, uh, Market makers are going to really have to buy their bid ask spread, uh, and then you know those those markets, those exchanges could fail. The bid ask spreads gets too wide, no one trades, and then market failure. So the idea here is there is there is there is a problem. Is uh, you know if all the cream gets skimmed off, will the the exchanges that, that they get whatever's left over because whatever's left over is a larger proportion of informed, will they be able to operate? Right. So that is that is an interesting aspect of this. Great. Have a great evening.